I want to try to explain a concept to you today about painting. It's, it's a little counterintuitive, but once you start to kind of understand how different layers of paint tend to work with other layers of paint, it starts to make sense. It's called, or at least I call it, underpainting. And it has to do with how layers of paint react with the colors that are underneath them and the reflectivity of light. And there's probably a bunch of physics involved or something, but just let me explain it to you in a simple terms because that's the way that I understand it. There's two main types that I think of, of underpainting. There's something called pre-shading, and then there's something that I basically don't have a great name for, but it's for trying to make uh, lighter colors work better over darker colors. We'll start with that one first because it's a little bit quicker. When you prime a model black, let's say, and then you realize, yeah, but this whole part needs to be white. If you try to just paint white directly over the black, it will generally almost never work. It'll be spotty and patchy, and you might have to put layer after layer after layer after layer just trying to get that to work so that the white looks white on top of the black. The way you fix that is you paint, instead of going layer after layer of white, you do layers that build up from the black to say the white in this case. Let's say you're talking about something like from Warhammer 40k, the Black Templars. They're mainly black, hence the name, and they have these shoulder pads that are mainly white, um, sometimes cream colored depending on. I like doing cream colored, but if you just try to paint that color directly over the black, it will look terrible. So your best bet, more often than not, is to try to paint over the black with a gray. Get that, and it will look a little patchy, but that's okay. And then if you want to, and these are all, again, thinned, light layers. It's best to use a wet palette. Watch the video about the wet palette so you understand how that works. But you basically want to build up. So you go from black to maybe a gray. And it doesn't have to be a super dark gray. It can be a medium gray. And then maybe you go from a light gray, and then you throw the white on top of that. And you have to kind of let it dry in between. But that will give you a very smooth, light color. A white that will work well on top of that black. There's other times that you want to concern yourself as well with the color underneath versus the color above. There are warm colors and cool colors. I went to art school, so I've got that whole nerd thing down as far as how, how colors work like that. But just to break it down for you, warm colors, your reds, your oranges, your yellows, they are warm like fire. Okay. Whereas cool colors like your blues, your greens, your purples, they are like ice or water, that kind of stuff. So those kind of things, that's the difference between warm colors and cool colors. Now, if you want to paint something gold, gold is kind of a warm color. It's a metallic, but it's a warm color. If you paint gold directly over black, which depending on the black can be kind of a cooler color, um, it's going to look kind of weird. If you have a blue model and you want to paint like gold shoulder pads on them, which I've been doing just recently with a uh, captain for my new Space Marines army, if you just paint blue gold over blue, it will make your gold, which is a warm color, look bluish, which is not what you're looking for. How do you fix that? Again, underpainting. What you do is you usually, what I do, is throw down a chocolate brown color and coat the area with that. Then I like to paint a dark gold color and then I like to put in like a sepia wash, and then I like to go in and do a little bit of highlight with a light gold color, and that's it. It's pretty quick. If you're doing a bunch of guys, it's real quick because you can just work in that whole kind of assembly line situation, and that will make your golds look much warmer and make them pop more than trying to paint them over black or, God forbid, in the case of my, uh, my current Space Marines blue. Now, silver, silver is kind of a cool color, so it can be over a lighter color uh, or a, a cool color like blue, and then it'll be a real cool blue. Um, even in that situation, I might throw down gray or something like that and then throw down silver. The other upside to having a dark, let's say, chocolate kind of color underneath gold is because in any spots that you missed in the detail will kind of like have like a shadow underneath and it'll be a warm shadow instead of a cool shadow. So it'll look right. If you're doing something like a power sword, which is also something I'm doing right now, all of these things are something that I've been thinking about recently because I've been actually having to do them 
as I've been painting over there in the paint station. So that's why I kind of came up with this video. If you wanted to do a power sword, which is a very light color generally, at least the way I paint it, I'm priming in black almost always, specifically with Space Marines. If, for example, I was going to paint, let's say, a, uh, I don't know, like a elfin princess, then I would definitely probably start with white and then be able to get the nice skin tones based off of that. Trying to put really nice, light, pale skin tones on top of black it's really an exercise in futility, don't bother. So what color goes underneath, and even what primer goes underneath, really kind of depends on what your ending color is going to hopefully look like. So you have to think ahead. But with the power sword, getting back to that. Guys primed black, so the first thing I did is I painted some gray on the power sword to kind of get that variation, get it up from the black. And then I went through and I painted the light blue color that I wanted. And I had to do a couple of coats of that because once I get that light blue color, I'm gonna go back with my airbrush and put in some white highlights and stuff like that, make it look great. But covering the black directly to light blue, that sky blue, wouldn't work. It would take, it would look kludgy. You'd have to put so many layers over it and it would look like, like garbage. The other kind of underpainting, and some of you who've watched some of my other blogs have probably seen this kind of underpainting before, is known as pre-shading. Pre-shading is when you take a model you prime it, usually black, and then you take something like a spray can or an airbrush, whatever you're, you know, kind of using. I usually use airbrush these days because I like to be able to control things a bit better. But you take that model and you spray it from above with a white or a very, very light gray. So you've got it black, you've primed it black, now you're spraying it from above. Not directly above, usually kind of at about a 30 to a 45 degree angle and you get all the way around the model. That what that does is it simulates light from the sky, which is where we usually expect light to come from or from the, you know, whatever, the fixtures in your house. But the light usually comes from above. Lights are not normally down on the ground shining up. It's just what we expect around here. And by around here, I mean on planet Earth. So what happens is, is that you want to put the light paint hitting it from the top of the model and catching the model and making it kind of fade to the dark parts and the undersides, under the arms, in between the legs, underneath folds and flaps and clothing, that kind of stuff. You do something like that and you get a model that looks like these guys, which is my Malifaux crew that I painted earlier in the year. You'll notice that they all look very, very black and white. Um, I've also done my Chaos Bike Lord. Uh, he's not been painted yet, but again, here's his pre-shaded condition. And then also um, also for my Chaos Army, I've got a Nurgle Demon Prince, which you can see here, both in completely unpainted, he's fine cast, which is why he's that gray color, and then you'll also see the pre-shaded version. Now, once you start applying paint to the pre-shaded version, you're thinking, well, I'm just going to cover all that up, it doesn't matter. The trick is, is to lay down thin layers of paint so that the color underneath, the white or the black, depending, or the fade in between, does matter. Um, with the Malifaux crew, the majority of the big base colors that are not metallic are actually not paints. They're secret weapon miniatures washes, which are much thicker than Games Workshop washes. They are, I think, in my personal opinion, designed for this. There are so many crazy colors um, that I really think that they were designed so that you put this wash on top of pre-shaded miniatures and you get this really nice, quick, thin very, very, you know, put it on very quickly, but it makes this great variation like in the cloaks and it just, it just looks right, okay? Um, another thing is, again, with my Nurgle Demon Prince, he's not finished yet, but again, mostly all the colors you see there, pretty much all the colors you see there, those are all washes on top of the pre-shading. And it gives, as you layer them and stuff like that, it gives this really interesting variation and it works out really, really well. A lot of people like to pre-shade vehicles too, bigger vehicles, tanks, things like that. That's totally doable. You can do that with, again, priming black and then priming white and then just going back and then painting a thin layer of paint over the top of it and you'll see the variation. Lately, I've been doing vehicles, painting them black, primer, with my airbrush, then going through and doing a dark blue color and then a lighter blue color as the kind of the highlight. And I've been doing my kind of shading that way. You don't want the vehicle to be all one color. You kind of want it to be a little, you know, variated. It just, I, in my opinion, looks a little bit more interesting. And then the other things you do on top of it, the weathering, the detailing, the metallics look 
they kind of pop a little bit more. They look a little more interesting. So for vehicles, like I said, I've seen, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about appreciating vehicles. And that's kind of where the idea came from, but I like starting to, I've really been starting to do it on miniatures. I like to be able to work in that situation where, especially um, hero type miniatures, where you're gonna be having, in a skirmish game, not everybody looks the same sometimes, specifically in Malifaux. Something like 40K, everybody's kind of dressed the same. They've all got the same armor with the same colors and that kind of stuff. So that's a different story. But when you're just saying, I have this ragtag group of different figures and I'm going to do some stuff with them, you can use something like pre-shading to prime them all at once, light them all at once with your white. That's what you're doing is you're actually lighting the model, making the model, the light source hit from above in this situation. Once they're all dry, you go back, you start putting washes on there, you start putting thin paints on there, however you want to do it. And then you will get, without having to learn really how to blend and get from, you know, let's say a real light, uh, a real light red color, let's say down to a dark, you know, red in, in the folds of a cloak, instead of having to look like you did that all with a brush and get that all figured out, you can just put wash on top of the variation and go from there. Pre-shading is going to help your painting in so many different ways because you'll be able to make things look better than you may have the skill to do with a brush. And I know people sometimes say, oh, airbrushing is cheating, but I don't believe that for a minute. I think any tool you use to make a, pint, a painted miniature and make it look great and make it so you're happy with it, that's all you have to really concern yourself with. Are you happy with it? Everybody else can do what they want, that's fine. If you're gonna use an airbrush, but still make it look really great and faded and you know the, the the blending and all that stuff who cares how you did it so in closing think about the layers of paint under the final layer of paint that people will see when they look at your model think about i have this white spot or this real light skin tone that i need to put over this predominantly dark model and don't just put that final color on the model over the black primer or over the dark red or anything along those lines. You have to build up. You have to think about that ahead of time. It's not just make it red, paint these parts blue, paint this part white, and I'm done. You have to think about the build up. And if you want to get into pre-shading, think about where the light's coming from, the white paint that you're spraying from above. If you can get black primer and white primer, I mean, you can do that even with rattle cans outside. You can spray them all, you know, black, wait for it to dry, and then go back and dust it from above. And you can get some great results. You don't need an airbrush, but you can get some really cool results and then paint on top of that, and you get this variation and this shading that looks awesome. Thinking about the paint that's underneath the paint is very important in your growth as a painter.